there's so many TikToks out there like, do what you love, you yeah. know, like do this and find your purpose. And, so, and it's very hard to find your purpose. And I think yeah. that it, again, it changes over time, right? My purpose 10 years ago is a lot different than it is now. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the 200% Life Podcast. We're excited. The season has been fire, fire, fire. And this today's episode, is actually this week's episode, is going to be no less than that. But I want to remind you to rate, subscribe, and like all the episodes. Share them, put them in your parties, whatever it is. And we look forward to continue pouring into our audience these amazing motivational, inspirational stories about business, life. And today... I'm very happy to have an amazing guest today, and uh, I know this has been a long time coming. I always wanted her to be a guest in this podcast because I think um, definitely the entrepreneurship journey that she's had has been incredible. So today joining me with me is the owner, operator of Celebration <laughs> Title Group, uh, 17 locations here in Central Florida, and also has started a franchise out in Michigan, Texas, Alabama, Virginia, and more states to come. And a lot of people know her here in the Central Florida real estate world, and I'm super fortunate to have Miss Amanda Douglas with Thank us. Thank you. you so much for having me. Thank you so uh, much for having me. Absolutely, for having the opportunity to come and talk to you today. So. Absolutely. I'm happy to be here. My first podcast with a glass of wine. <laughs> there you go. Well, cheers to you. I'm really excited. We yes, are cheers. We're drinking Miami today, uh, Pinot Noir, so this cheers to that. Style. Love it. We're just here to relax. We're just going to talk a little bit. And um, let's get down to nitty gritty. I mean, I just want to hear, you know, your story. Um, I've heard bits and pieces, but I think, you know, obviously coming in just directly from you is going to be even more amazing. So uh, Amanda Douglas, where, like, where did you grow up and where, how did your journey start? And and where did you grow up, first of all? Sure. So it's so funny. I was just telling you in the (laughs) hallway, I was like, I just drove back from... Whole county, so I'm actually born and raised in Florida, which I know there's not a lot of us still here, yeah. right? <laughs> um, but born and raised in Lake Wales, a really small Lake town Wales, yeah. in Polk County, a uh, very small town, country mm-hmm. family, like raised pigs, like when I was younger, <laughs> like nobody would guess that about me now, but um, just a very, very simple life and uh, very. Very, very fortunate to have a very good upbringing. But, um, you know, when I talk about, like, my past, it was, like, never – entrepreneurship was never a part of yeah. my past and never a part of our family conversations, right? It was more of that scarcity mindset around yeah. money and, you know, you know, just be a teacher and, you know, marry your high school sweetheart yeah. and, like, you know, not saying that there's anything wrong with that, but there was never a bigger, yeah. bigger vision or a bigger picture. And I grew up in a very small town like that where it's, like, not a lot of people leave yeah. where they are. Mm-hmm. Um, and believe it or not, it's only, like, an hour and a half from here. Yeah, and population is small, right? Very small. Right. And uh, I just say it's Alabama in the middle <laughs> of Florida. Um, but, you know, I mention it to people here and they're like, where is that? You yeah. know, but um, I'm super fortunate to grow up in a very, very southern culture, very, very humble upbringing. So I'm, I'm happy to, to have been one of my biggest passions is to um, the generational cycle yeah. that you break, and that's something I'm super passionate about. And talking yeah. about with entrepreneurship of how important it is to be that first person in your family to break through it's and beautiful. to change the life of your family. So. Goodness. And how many brothers, sisters, siblings? I do. So I have three sisters, nice. um, my mom and dad. So when I moved to Orlando, I was like, I had the first grandchild. So you can just imagine gotcha. what happened. My parents <laughs> picked up and moved right after. It was like first grandbaby. So my oldest son is a little spoiled and I know he's going to watch this. So I love it. Um, but you know, like the Christmases where everyone's around him, like, what's he going to do? You know? But I have three sisters and believe it or not, everybody's in Orlando now. So everybody moved to Orlando. Everybody nice. Moved yeah. to Orlando and a lot of it, um, you know, most of my family works in the business now. So, yeah. Oh, and really in, cool. in Celebration, in Celebration Title. title. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I kind of think I know who it is. Yeah. <laughs> I think I so that. my sister Becky yes. is my operations manager. Beautiful. So, um, So she's a big part of that. My mom does all my payroll, my books, you know, she's my money manager still. Um, my dad pretends like he works <laughs> at Celebration, so he'll mm-hmm. go around to every office and try to fix things and yep. no- normally breaks it. So <laughs> he's on retirement, like 101. Yeah. But um, my other sister runs our nonprofit. So, yeah. I love it. Yeah, so it's so all family. I love it's it. It's all family. Great. It's all built on family. Even as big as it's gotten, we're still the core of us, our, our family. That's beautiful. So yeah. big family. Uh, 
um, big family. I'm a, it's, I love it. And um, so high school and everything in Lake Wales. High school. Was it Lake Wales High School? Lake Wales High School. We just have one. <laughs> 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 they don't get very adventurous with the names there. So, yeah, 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 just, yeah. Just one high school. And actually, I went to college at Florida Southern, so in oh, Lakeland. So I didn't really leave Polk County. So Got not it. the most adventurous <laughs> upbringing. Um, but went to Florida Southern, and um, when I graduated Florida Southern, I was going to law school at Nova, um, oh. and that's when I kind of started finding the passion for title insurance. It's not something you learn about, yeah, of right? Course. You're just like, don't come out of the womb, like, I want to be a title, title agent. agent. Like, nobody yeah. even hears about that. So I actually started interning for an attorney that owned a title company, and that was in 2005. And we all know fave, yeah. what was happening in yes. 2005 was that there was crazy boom in real estate. Yeah. And I just was like, fell in love with the industry and fell in love with the puzzle pieces that title had to offer. You know, I just started as a receptionist there, mm -hmm. you know, just interning, kind of learning about it, getting my, my hours for... Yeah. my law classes yeah. and um you know my the attorney approached me about working coming on to work full time and you know i had to make a decision of you know finishing law school you know doing out that passion or you know going into you know this crazy industry i was like who works in this this is wild and then yeah. you'd be there working till 10 o'clock at night you remember yeah. those days i, I know you were in, yeah. in it in that Five, time six. and uh, <laughs> we were all so entrenched in it but i think at that time, I really realized that law wasn't really something I wanted to do. It was something yeah. that kind of, you know, when you're growing up, your parents tell you, like, attorney. the only way to get out of here is to be an attorney or, or a doctor. doctor. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, okay, I'll pick the attorney route. Yeah, of but, course. like, now to think about it, I'm like, I would have been so bored. Uh, yeah. But now I spend my days fighting with attorneys, which is kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of fun. But law school dropout, which is gotcha. fun. Um, but then I ended up going into title and have it really looked back. I um, started working at a title company uh, really early on. So I've been now on 18 years. Oh, wow. Uh, Same as us, yeah. actually. Same so as us. I went on 18 years, yeah. And so straight as college, you went for law school only or you were trying to do another uh, nope. major? So I, I, in major, I did finance. So finance. I was already like good at numbers. I yeah. was already good with that. So I realized very quickly that title is actually very much a puzzle piece, yeah. right? It's very much about numbers yeah. and balancing CDs. And it was very intriguing to me. And I think that's a big passion of mine now too, is like finding young talent straight yeah. out of college. So it's like, they maybe never have thought about yeah. title as, you know, they just don't know what it is, right? You have yeah. no idea what it is until you actually yeah. close on your first house. Absolutely. And you're like, what are these people doing? You know? <laughs> yeah. um, but at the end of the day, it's really about finance and it's about really solving problems and it's very challenging, like real estate. Like every yeah. every single transaction is different. It's a little more for the operational mindset people rather mm -hmm. than, you know, the people that want to go out and meet people and get <laughs> listings and all of that. Yeah. But it's like that place for that, you know, that S and that C, you know, and that disc profile where yeah. it's like we have a home for you, you know, straight out of college. And it's actually something that you can build a real future in. So mm -hmm. that's been a big passion of mine is to pull these people out of like job fairs <laughs> and younger yeah. people and um, if you think of title too, and I, I'm assuming you probably have a lot of listeners in yeah, real estate. Absolutely. <laughs> so, you know, title is so old and yeah. boring and, you know, there's no better way to explain it. Yeah. So it's something that I saw such a niche in where I'm like, okay, we're going to have this wave of people that just retire Correct. out of time. And then what's going to happen, mm -hmm. right? Because most of the people that I worked with were you know, 40 years plus on my age, yeah. you know? And so I wanted to start, you know, bringing some younger people into it. Yeah. And that's kind of where the idea of celebration kind of came from. It's like, okay, I want to bring all these people into this yeah. industry that's old and boring and make it fun too yeah. at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Especially in our area. Yeah. Um, you know, same thing goes for us. I mean, mm -hmm. you take G World and, you know, Orlando just in itself, it's not like Miami, it's not right. New York, yeah. you know? And yeah. Uh, we wanted to the same thing, bring something, fill in that gap. So, right. yeah. and, and so how important is that to, to actually find that niche? Right. So important. Like that was like the one thing I think, you know, I started working at several different title companies. I work for a lot of attorneys, uh -huh. um, you know, and they're very kind of narrow minded yeah. and, you know, not necessarily entrepreneurs, but they're attorneys. They're, they're trying to grow a business, but it's like, okay, what is your one thing? Mm -hmm. um, and I think, the thing that a lot of title companies around here miss or a lot of attorneys offices that run title miss that we're really a customer service business. Yep. So we need to have a unique selling proposition. You know, you're not going to be able to just 
go off of, oh, Amanda has great service. That's just about yeah. me. I want it to make, make it about something bigger than myself. Mm-hmm. No, that's beautiful. That's yeah. beautiful. So you got into title at what age, roughly? So I was 22. Okay, yeah, wow. Yeah, 22. Yeah. Gotcha. yeah. Just a few years ago, right? Yeah, just a few <laughs> years ago. <laughs> I love it. So, 20, so that's, that's, that's really good. I mean, so yeah. at a young age, starting to, to start, and I always tell the listeners, too, it's just, um, you know, the more the earlier you can get into something, sure. I think it's, it's very, very important. So 22 years internship, uh, title attorney's office for title. Right. And then just kind of took it straight through. So I actually, um, when the market shifted in about 2008, um, I actually started working for Fannie Mae directly. So I got a really, really great job working directly for Fannie Mae. I worked for a Fannie Mae designated title company. You know, I was going back and forth to Dallas and, you know, I was the person that got assigned all those REO deals and had to find their realtors (laughs) to close them. So it's funny now I'm on the other end of it where I'm (laughs) entertaining realtors where they used to try to entertain me to get, get the business. But, um, it was a really interesting time. So, but it was a, such an integral time for me to learn about title because I feel like if you can yeah. close an REO oh. transaction, <laughs> you can close anything. Yeah. Um, so I learned so much about title itself and that's when I really kind of fell in love with the industry for sure. So um, that was more from like a service kind of sales standpoint rather yeah. than actually working as a, you know, a title agent. Yeah. Um, so I got kind of the feel of both. And then I actually, even after that, transitioned into doing real estate full time. Oh, realtor. So I was a realtor wow. full time. Um, so I had worked for a local title company for, I want to say about four or five years. I was kind of helping them open different offices. This was right after Fannie Mae. And, you know, I kind of got the bug for, okay, I'd have my realtors in my ear like, you're so great. Why don't you open your own? And I just never had that yeah. belief in myself. That wasn't my thing, right? Mm-hmm. I, um, I had gotten divorced really young. So I mm-hmm. had a three and a one-year-old when um, I got divorced and was 26 years old at okay. that time. So you know, I had two little ones. And so you always think about them first, yeah, right? And it's, it's a lot harder to make that leap when you have, yeah. you know, those two little ones that are looking at you yeah. and you're just trying to put food on the table at that point. So, you know, I'd have a lot of people that would push me and they're like, you should just do it, you know, just go out, do your own own thing. And I'm like, you know what? I, I don't know if I believe in myself enough to do that, yeah. but I'm going to get my real estate license because I had a lot of realtors that would tell me and I would do open houses on the weekends. So yeah. I started just doing work full time during the day, I was that single mom bringing my kids to open houses on the weekends and they'd open the door. They're like, welcome home, you know, like trying to help me sell houses. And I finally got to a point um, and it was within about six months where I had sold a couple of homes and I was just like, I want to make the leap of going full time into something, into into real estate. I liked real estate. I was really good at it, but I didn't. That wasn't my end goal passion. I definitely love title but I was working out a non-compete, so it was perfect timing. So I decided to just make the leap, go into real estate full-time for a year, and during that year, um, my oldest son was actually diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. So Mm -hmm. it was like really that pivotal moment for me where um, you know, I was like, okay, I have to do something right. Yeah. Like, I mean, when, when something happens with your children, it's just like, it's a different yeah. feeling. You're like, mm-hmm. okay, I have to make enough money f- to even, you know, pay for his care to even pay for, you know, the monthly costs that it takes to, to keep the insulin, all the, the things, you know, and you start digging into, you know, even the, we're, we're so big about it now with our <laughs> charity. So like, yeah, this yeah. is what our company was built on. It was a passion to really give back to, mm-hmm. um, you know, just the cost as a young single mom of, of going through insurance and trying to deal and navigate all of that. And I was like, got to that point where I was like, you know what, enough is enough. You know, yeah. like, I think you just, some of us just have that click. Yeah. And that was my moment where it's like, there's, I'm made for something way more than this, where I'm not shouldn't be worried about $20 a month yeah. of medical bills and yeah. things like that. So, you know, I just was like, I'm going to go all in. I'm just going to do it. Uh, I'm going to go for it. And, you know, I have, it's the craziest story, but I uh, was in real estate and I had this listing. I'll never forget it. <laughs> um, but I had over planner analysis by paralysis, right? Where mm. you're just like <laughs> over planning everything. I was like, I need $40,000 to start my own office. And I'm yeah. talking like just me, right? Yeah. And open an office, you know, get all the insurance going. 
Um, and I had this listing and it was a short sale I thought was never going to sell, but it was like a $900,000 listing oh, wow. that I ended up double siding. And I kid you not when I got the check and I like get chills thinking Smart, about it yeah. now that the check was like 40,376. Like it, it was, was exactly like, what exa- it yeah, and I is. just like remember sitting there, like looking at that check and like just crying. And yeah. I'm like, this is my sign yeah. where I just have to go for it. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, ever since that day, I, Mm -hmm. I never looked back. I opened a tiny 10 by 10 office in Champions Gate. Um, one of the Remax brokers in Champions Gate asked me if I just wanted to be in their space. I rented it for like $300 a month and (laughs) I was like, okay, I'll do like, you know, a couple, you know, five, six closings a month. That'll pay my bills. It's going to be great, but I'm my own boss, right? I can make my own rules and, um, and yeah, it just exploded from there. <laughs> <laughs> now you just talked about that special moment, obviously yeah. getting that, that big check. Yeah. Um, how nerve wracking? Cause I know cause I'm entrepreneur yeah. between how long did that transaction take? Oh, the transaction took <laughs> a long time. I mean, the transaction took probably about nine months, <laughs> That's um, like, but yeah. I, it just like, it was in the back of my mind. It's like, of course. you know, you're calculating that. And that was more money than I'd made in a year. Yeah, of course. I made like $38,000 yeah. a year at that point. It was, you know, like barely anything. And my family are like, you're insane. Yeah, like, of course. how are you going to take all of this money, just made everything you just made and put into it? But there was just something tapping me on my shoulder, like, Right during that time, I had a really good friend of mine introduce me to Tony Robbins. You know, I'm a huge Tony Robbins <laughs> fan now. So all about um, personal development. I started reading a lot more and just, you know, being more positive for my kids. I just wanted to be an example and someone they were really yeah. proud of. Yeah. How hard is it to go after your dreams yeah. with everybody? Like you just said, telling you that yeah. you're crazy. Don't do it. It's the worst thing. It's not going to go. I mean, it's, how, it's how, how so it? hard. It's so hard. It's like you have to have that mental clarity of just like, you know, if you lose that belief in yourself. Right. Yeah. Like I always say the hardest person to the hardest person to even like boss is always going to be yourself. Right. Like, you know, we have you know, over 80 employees now and like the hardest person, like if they ask me, I'm like, it's myself, right. To get Mm -hmm. myself motivated and get myself into a certain state of mind. But like, you just can't have those outside forces controlling you and telling you what to do. And I think I always am driven on the passion of like, almost like proving people wrong. I love it. I'm the same way. (laughs) Yeah. And it's, it's been such a big thing for me. And like, you know, sometimes it can be at a fault, right? Like sometimes we can push ourselves too much, but um, it's really cool when you never knew you had that fire yeah. and then you actually do something really amazing and it just kind of compounds from there. So, you know, I think that's, that's the hardest thing is just keeping focused mm-hmm. and just making sure your circle is tight and the people you surround yourself with are encouraging you mm-hmm. and are there for you to support you no matter what. And your story is amazing because I mean, we have a ton of listeners, single mom. Yeah. Yeah. Making mm-hmm. her way. Right. Yes. And then um, having that moment mm-hmm. of victory, right? Yes. Getting that check and then 100%. moving into yeah, 200 percent. Yeah, 200 percent. Yeah, <laughs> so I always got to correct. I always got to correct. Uh, but um, having that moment of just um, uh, it's it's almost like, you know, I've made it and I, I got yeah. this shot to either continue what I'm continuing doing and be mm-hmm. OK or be not happy where I'm at. Right. Or actually taking the leap yeah. and having everything. So uh, I commend you for that because Thank I think, you, you know, this. Yeah single mom thing it's I mean I, c- I couldn't imagine being a single mm-hmm. dad yeah and hopefully God listen to me that will never be a single dad uh, that I'll have my wife always next to me but um it must be crazy yeah. you know to yeah. have support it, it was there ever a moment where like it was the struggle was real like literally oh, like yeah I mean there's still those moments <laughs> now right where the struggle is real but I think you know if you look back on it mm-hmm. Um, and just give yourself grace. You know, yeah. I've always, every single day is if I'm 1% better every day. And yeah. I just think about that at night and I tell my kids the same thing that, um, that's all we can give. Right? Yeah. That's all we can ask for. So, um, <laughs> you know, my kids have been so supportive through the whole growth and everything. Um, being a single mom is not easy, but I think that I've found, you know, I always tell people too, like, I think we think too much about, what our passion is, mm-hmm. right? Like we're like, okay, I loved art. Like I thought yeah. I wanted to be an artist. You know, that was my passion. Um, but a lot of times we think about like, I don't love title insurance. Like yeah. it's boring. <laughs> Sorry. You know, there's nothing yeah. fun or exciting yeah. or sexy about it. 
but I found that it's the vehicle to do what I'm passionate about. And um, it's funny, everybody will say like, I have a soft spot for single moms. So yeah. now it, like I hire so many single, single moms, moms. <laughs> and like just relate, seeing yeah. their lives change and like doing things for them, providing opportunities for them is what fuels me. Like the things that I never had when I was a single mom, mm-hmm. like I'm so passionate about everyone having, you know, health insurance. I pay for their health insurance. Like, yeah. you know, things that I wanted as a single mom and yeah. the support, like I can now pour into other people so they can focus on growth for themselves yeah. and not be so worried about the things that just are yeah. keeping their family alive. I want them to think about, you know, the things that they can really bring joy, you know, yeah. like, you know, and true fulfillment in life. I love it. Yeah. So now celebration title starts. What yes. year was that? That was 2016. Oh, wow. 2016. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So we're seven years. Gotcha. Gotcha. So that yeah. big short sale transaction was like the same year. Same year. 16. Same year. Wow, 2016. Crazy. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. It was one of the final years of, um, of like the distressed properties I remember. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So starting that, so you just talked about passion and you love title insurance mm-hmm. and you got to be passionate about what, what, what you do. But, um, I always talk, also talk about purpose, right? right. And not every hairdresser should own a salon. Yes. <laughs> not every, <laughs> great cook should own a restaurant, sure. <laughs> right? Or yeah. a great chef because there's something behind auction entrepreneurship. Mm-hmm. So um, taking that and now starting this company, um, how important was it to find that purpose? And what was sure. that purpose in, in Celebration Title Group? Yeah, and I think, you know, when I first started, you know, we all think about like the purpose being, of course, my kids just providing a better life for them, mm-hmm. my family, you know, breaking that generational yeah. cycle for them. You know, we grew up in a very... You know, Mm -hmm. like I said, very scarcity mindset culture where it's just like we barely get by. You know, my mom waited tables at a restaurant. My dad worked at a factory. Like Mm -hmm. we were just very, very simple life, like six of us in a thousand square foot (laughs) home. You know, it's like, you know, we didn't have that much. Um, But I think my purpose has changed over time. It's always still family. But like my actual um, team, my extended family, I call them, are, are yeah. my real purpose. So it's like, like I said, just seeing them evolve and seeing, you know, every month we do personal development classes. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm super fortunate to be able to go to these Tony Robbins events and all these amazing things. And I'm yeah. a huge reader and podcast and all of yeah. that. But I take all of that and I kind of combine it and put it into stories that they can relate to at their level and just help them kind of build stepping stones for their family. So I feel like my purpose is, um, I always tell people, I, I feel like I can see good and opportunity and other people before they can see it in themselves. Mm-hmm. And I just grab onto them <laughs> and I don't let them go yeah. until they see it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Now we, we always, obviously we, we relate, I mean, yeah. managing people, being in leadership, you know, sometimes you do have to kind of Tell them what their weaknesses are, their strengths right. are, et cetera. Yeah. So as a leader, what has been your biggest challenge? You know, um, and, and before I ask that question, actually, sure. you went from being yourself, 2016. Yeah. Yeah. When did you have your first employee? So 2016, I had my first employee within a couple of months. So I okay. actually convinced one of our, <laughs> my old processors, I don't know, God bless her, yeah. how I convinced her to come work with me. Um, and then by about six months later, I had my third employee, which was my sister. So (laughs) I convinced her to come on board, uh, um, and come help me run the operation side of it. Cause I started getting more into the sales and the closings and all of that. But the vision of celebration was always there, but I couldn't execute on it cause it yeah. was just me. Yeah, of you course. Know, the vision of, of the celebration closings yeah. and everything that we do. But, um, you know, I had my, my third employee by like month six, month six, yeah. the biggest growth spur uh, when you started getting more employees and now you're at 80, well, right. what year was that maybe? So the biggest growth spurt would be 2021. Oh, wow. Probably, so yeah. <laughs> so it was probably my biggest growth spurt. I definitely, you know, grew yeah. year over year. Um, biggest growth spurt would have been 2021. 2021. Yeah, for sure. So <laughs> where we almost doubled our employees. That's crazy. So. Yeah. Be biggest like challenge as a leader in leadership. Mm-hmm. What has it been? Um, that's funny. The, I think the biggest challenge in leadership is just my number one thing I always say is not everybody works at the same capacity that you do. And I think that we're, <laughs> we're gifted to be able to lead by example and to be able to encourage and inspire, but, um, doing it without any sort of expectation mm-hmm. in return of how they're going to deliver. So I think it's just, being able to sit back and say, 
okay, this is what was delivered from that pers- pers- person for a reason and for yeah. a purpose and not expecting anything mm-hmm. out of it, um, I think is the biggest challenge because, you know, we, we always think everybody works at our speed and of everybody course. work, you know, um, <laughs> you know, everyone always might, it's funny. My sister always says, she's like, I'll send an email and then she'll be, she'll reply. Cause she's the more operational mindset. She'll go, okay, I speak Amanda language and this <laughs> is what she actually meant. Yeah. Um, because you know, sometimes we're just so fast and busy talking. So it's mm. also understanding that not everybody has the same personality. Not everybody can understand mm. or read right. your mind or where you're going. And, um, being a visionary is very hard to come back to a level of execution and going into the details yeah. and the minute stuff. And it can be yeah. frustrating, but at the same time, once it's, it's on paper, it's, it's very rewarding. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, I know celebration Tiger group is known a ton for the culture, yes, <laughs> the yes. culture. And, um, probably I would say one of the funnest <laughs> title companies that you Thank can you. work with number one and number two, obviously for clientele. Yeah. Um, I always say we have two clients in our business mm-hmm. and I'm sure you can relate to the yeah. same, uh, the clients that buy and sell property and the employees and the team behind you is some of client cause you got to yeah. do it. Right. So how important is it to build a culture when you're starting a business? It's the number one most important thing. Yeah. So I always started with my team first. I think if you take care of your team, they're going to take care of your clients. So, mm-hmm. you know, we're very much a uh, team centric. Everything is about our culture. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, if you start there first, and I think the greatest gift that you can give a team member is building their self-esteem mm-hmm. and they can in turn they they feel good about taking care of their clients. They feel good about their job. They feel good about showing up every day. They start showing up differently. And I think that's where the culture piece of it is, is number one. You, you have to start there. You have to invest yeah. in the culture first. And the culture for celebration title is amazing. It's a celebration. Yeah, every, everything's a celebration. It gets a little annoying. Yeah, so, no, it's you know, when, when we hired people, we're like, do you like social media? Do you like confetti? We're going to celebrate you all yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah. So to get used to it, we like to dress up. We yeah. like to, you know, like today yeah. we did like a fun bingo game and people dressed up. <laughs> like, it's just... We realize that our industry is very, again, it can get very tedious. tedious and there's and a lot of a work boring. and a lot of boring, yeah, a lot of <laughs> getting a lot of people yelling at you sometimes yeah. when, you know, they're, you're handling their biggest transaction and p- there are a lot of emotions involved. Yeah. So how do I get everyone to kind of take a step back? And I've worked at a lot of title companies yeah. where they didn't recognize that and people get burnout very, very easily. So uh, we, we try to take a step back. And I think the coolest thing too, as a leader is just like seeing the friendships evolve within our organization. So like people are building really lifelong friends and, um, we're super picky about the people we bring into the organization. So if it's a referral first, we'll take it right. Like a referral of friends or family or whatever. So we're really building a big culture based on that. That's amazing. And then everything is so, I mean, you go into any celebration title office and I've been to, I think four of them already. Yeah. Exactly the same. Like as far as like, you know, decor, same attitude. Attitude, mm-hmm. um, same you know helpful um, yeah. attitude uh, from Thank everybody you. that's that's there, um, and if they can't you know if they don't know the answer they'll figure it out somehow. I don't yes, know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I try to. I just yeah. tell everyone we want to be like the Disney experience of yeah. title, where it's like no matter what office you're in, if you're in Winter Haven or Fort Lauderdale or Daytona. You're feeling exactly the same. Like we built our own scent. Like you'll notice, like all the offices smell the same. Yep. Like they yeah. all look the same. Yeah. And we did all of that for a purpose. Yeah, of course. And you know, it was like the, all the offices look like that. Was like one of my big goals from the beginning is for it to look like a home when you go in. Yeah. Um, and it's just because everyone is so on edge in a real yeah. estate transaction. So I think when they come in and they can just feel correct. Like, you know, when people come to a closing table, I think I've sold more of like this farmhouse table that we have. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, I should be sponsored by Wayfair, yeah, by the go. way. I sell like this, this table, you know, cause they're just so their defenses are down. Yep. And you know, when you can celebrate and when you can have fun and like, we're the people that are putting the bow on it and sending it out the door, yeah. you know, it shouldn't be this stale you know, or even this high rise stuffy office and people walk in, they're like, oh, this is where all my money went. Yeah. We wanted to really have a very family feel. Yeah. 
Um, and I'm glad that, that you've noticed that. Yeah, no, so, I did notice that. And that's yeah. very important because I'm attention to detail all the yeah. time. And I have noticed that that's kind of like the culture and the mm -hmm. uh, atmosphere you've built sure. in, in those offices and yeah. and uh, family. And everybody feels like a big family. I'm a big I'm a big believer of that. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I get a little carried away. I have bringing people, yeah. you know, the, the agents to the house and all that stuff. Yeah. But um, I just believe that they're, like you said, an extended family. Yeah. So how important is that to to actually, you know, you know, get down with them really to, to understand, you know, who they are? What are the strengths, what are the weaknesses of every oh, single person that works for you? the number one most important thing. We do so much. Like, we have this really cool system um, that we call, uh, it's called Crystal Nose. I don't know if you've heard of this oh. um, system, but it kind of is like the disc personality, but with mm -hmm. Enneagram, with all these different uh, types of personality things. And we have everyone do that, you know, when they get hired. Nice. And you can do certain playbooks with each other. So, like, we, we do fun things where we'll, like, make fun of each other's personalities together, you know. Because yeah. it'll say how, how to talk to, you know, Amanda, how to talk to Amanda in an email. It's like, email her in three sentences or less, you know, how to talk to <laughs> Jody. Like, you know, tell her a story from your childhood. Yeah, got and, it. You know, that's we cool. just try to understand each other. Yeah. Um, I think that's the most important thing and understand it's like children, right? Like I can't parent my oldest son the same way I parent my youngest right. son. They have two completely different personalities Correct. and it's the same way at yeah. work. Yeah. So that's a chameleon kind of in us. Uh, yeah. It always starts in sales, but yeah. I'm the same way. I have to, you know, just like you said, for every person that you work with, you mm -hmm. have to kind of like adjust to that personality. Yeah. yeah you have to. 100%. <laughs> well, and you have to know what's going on in their life. Yeah. You have to know yeah, how you can support them. So like yeah. relationships, we're in a relationship business. Yeah. And so the relationship starts with our employees. Too. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Was delegation a problem for you? Um, delegation <laughs> was definitely a problem for me yeah. from the beginning. Um, Cause obviously mm -hmm. we're in a very heavy yeah. financial business yeah. right especially with money so you know delegating was really hard um obviously the like i said my biggest challenge yeah. as um a ceo is like understanding not a lot of people work yeah. at the same pace Please. or the same yeah. capacity so but delegating has been my number one thing that i've like been able to figure out where my weaknesses are and where my strengths are right. too so Correct. you know like i've i've been able to see like holy cow like some people can do things yeah. a lot better than me <laughs> when I release yeah, control. Um, so it was definitely a, a problem for me yeah. from the beginning. <laughs> but again, going to a lot of Tony Robbins events and digging yeah. a lot into Have business to. mastery, which is like I recommend highly for any yeah. business owner mm -hmm. is just realizing like this, our psychology is, it says 80% of business is psychology, right? Of the owner and then 20% is going to be systems. And I think we're so into where he calls, um, you know, staying as an operator in our business rather than an owner. And like yeah. once you, you pull yourself out of like operating and trying to like pull the lever on every yeah. single part of your organization and really trusting your team, like you can truly be an owner Yeah. and you can see the bigger picture. So it's funny, like, you know, I'll, you know, sometimes I'll like, you know, try to get my hand in something and they'll be like, oh my God, you're trying to be an operator again. Like stay in your stay lane. Back. Like we want you to go be the visionary and find the opportunities. So I still catch myself doing it now. So yeah, yeah. It's, it's an ever, ever evolving process. I'm the same way. Yeah. <laughs> I try now, but I, it's very important to understand, you know, that you can do everything. Right. And, um, as much as we try to be, you know, superwoman, superman, mm -hmm. it's impossible sometimes, yeah, you know, and it's, sure. you know, um, and expansion. Yeah. So 17 offices and now right. you're heading into different states. Sure. Um, how important was that for you to expand that, the business yeah. and number two, how important was it? And then number two, why was it important to you to expand? Yeah, I think, you know, I never went into, it's crazy. Everyone asked me, but I never went into opening celebration for it to grow. I just <laughs> honestly just thought I would have this one small office yeah. and it would just, you know, freedom, right? You yeah. want your freedom on your own terms and be able to control your own files. But I think that the expansion for me was like when I really opened up myself to like seeing other opportunities. So when yeah. um, I would go to events and I would meet yeah. other sales reps and they would be like, oh my gosh, I love what you're doing. Yeah. You know, would you ever <laughs> consider hiring me? And I'm like, <laughs> almost like, in a sense, I'm like, I want to collect all of them. I want them yeah, all to work all for me. They're all so great. Um, but my expansion was all based around the people. So I never Beautiful. expanded just saying, hey, I want to go Spam. into Jacksonville yeah. and open an office. It was I found the person and then built 
around them. That's awesome. Yeah. That's actually really, really good because yeah. um, that's actually a really good strategy to expand. Yeah, you know, and it was all it through like networking events. You know, yeah. of course, I went to networking events to meet realtors, but I really was there to meet other <laughs> title reps. See if you or, recruit. Yeah, see if I could recruit. And, you know, some of our best um, even title reps have been old real estate agents. So nice. um, just because they know how to network, they know how to build a business. But um, mo like majority of it has been I just expanded around a person. So unless I have an opportunity or I see yeah. somebody with potential, mm -hmm. I'm not going to just open an Bring office. Out face, just to open an just office. Just to open yeah, an yeah, office. office. Like, I believe in our brand that much, but I would rather build it around someone. Yeah, it's very, very, very important. Yeah. And um, so where is Celebration Title Group? Uh, we talked a little bit about it. Where are you headed now? Where is it, what yeah. does the next 12 months look like for, sure. for Amanda so and Celebration? Next 12 months, so we're really expanding. So we have a really big announcement coming on oh, Friday. Nice. Um, so, uh, really cool. So stay tuned to our social media, <laughs> uh, just a little plug there. Yeah. Um, but that's really going to take some of our expansion to wow. a whole other level outside of the state. Um, we have a couple more markets we're targeting in Florida, but, um, as far as other States go, you know, we see probably opening another five to six States nice. in the next year. So we're Beautiful. kind of on track to do one to two a quarter. So, oh, beautiful. Yeah. That's, that's exciting. Yeah, that's exciting. <laughs> we're really excited. We're really excited. So we're starting to really see some huge opportunities. Yeah. There's, um, in 20, between 2020 and 2021, I had a couple of acquisitions. That's what kind of grew the beautiful. business too. Love it. Um, and they were very successful. And I think that we're, we're hyper-focused on that <laughs> too. So any small title companies out there hey, that want to come under listening. the Celebration <laughs> brand, Come Let us over. know. <laughs> so we're definitely in full acquisition mode too. So when you started that first office, let's say that first the first year, how many transactions were you doing? Oh my gosh, the first year I was doing probably like six a month. Six a month? Yeah. And where's Celebration Title now? What are you so, doing a month in all markets, all states, everything? All markets, all states were somewhere around 400 a month. <laughs> so yeah. Cheers to that. I know, I know we're Cheers due for a mile. <laughs> yes. I love so, it. Yeah, 400. So, I mean, that's that's incredible. Yeah. I can't even do the math on that. But, I know. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, it's, that's incredible. it's incredible growth. And to even think back of doing yeah, six, I insane. thought I was like stressed out. I thought I was going to pull my <laughs> hair out. So, it's cool to think about the numbers and we're just continuing to grow from there. So, so, within the next year, with all these markets opening, your goal is to get to what, how many transactions a month? So, we'd, we'd like to be at a thousand transactions Beautiful. a month. Beautiful. So, yeah. Beautiful, yeah, beautiful. Up, and so. I would say we're all having growth everywhere. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we'll follow Celebration wherever you go. Thank you. <laughs> so, Thank you. Uh, we are also, you know, thinking on Texas and all these other states yeah. and stuff like that. So I know. And it's funny because like everywhere that um, kind of like our company and our groups are expanding, I think a lot of people are expanding. And I'm glad that For you're sure. A hundred percent. We're so happy to be in partnership with you guys. Our, no. Just our values, our culture, yeah. our everything are in alignment. And we're super, super fortunate to be we work hard and we play hard yes 100 percent. we've experienced yeah the, the best grand opening party i've ever been to here i love it I love yes it. and people were asking when's the next one and we're like no clue it was just a grand opening. well let's keep opening offices and we can just throw parties it'd be great absolutely absolutely yeah. so a couple more questions obviously uh we're uh, my producers waving like our flags and stuff so um we're a little over time but it's okay uh we're having so much fun um so a couple more questions sure. so we we spoke about expansion we spoke about culture, purpose. Um, what is something that you would tell uh, either a young entrepreneur that's currently a young entrepreneur or mm -hmm. somebody that's trying to get into entrepreneurship? Sure. Um, what is the best advice you can give? Yeah, I think, you know, again, just going back to what I said, I think a lot of us like um, get stuck on that, like what is my purpose kind of thing. And I yeah. think what I, like what I said where I, when I started, I was like, it's my kids. I want to yeah. build a life for them. And it just kind of evolves as you go. So just getting stuck on, you know, there's so many TikToks out there like, do what you love, you yeah. know, like do this and find your purpose. And, so, and it's very hard to find your purpose. And I think yeah. that it, again, it changes over time, right? My purpose 10 years ago is a lot different mm -hmm. than it is now. So just don't get stuck in your own head about yeah. finding that. I think that you kind of find it and build it along the way. Um, you know, I never was a super confident kid, you know, yeah. even if you ask my mom, like I almost failed kindergarten because <laughs> I goodness. wouldn't even stand up and say my ABCs in oh, front wow. of the class. Like I didn't <laughs> love public speaking. I didn't love any of that. You know, I'm still not a hundred percent confident in yeah. it, but I think that we all kind of get, get that paralysis by analysis where you're just like, I have to be so confident and I have to be 
the loudest person in the room and I have to be, yeah. you know, the strongest person in the room to be the entrepreneur, yeah. to be the CEO. And I think there's a beauty in quiet confidence. There's a beauty in, yeah. um, you know, a lot of people will call me like the silent assassin. They're like, where does she come <laughs> from? You know? And I don't think that you have to be the loudest right. person. Right. I think That's that awesome. The co it's the courage that comes first, right? Yeah. Just having that moment of just taking action and taking massive action on whatever your goal is and the confidence comes along the way and it's just a cycle. So, you know, again, you get the courage to do another goal and the confidence comes yeah. along the way. You don't need the confidence first. And this is actually good because uh, I think you're the second female on my show. Really? Okay. <laughs> the first one was Gia. Okay. <laughs> so so I, I like it because obviously I'm a big admirer, um, you know, um, of, you know, women in entrepreneurship. Yeah. So what advice do you give to those women that are mm -hmm. thinking about entrepreneurship and are just like, should I do it? Should I not? Yeah. What's the big advice? So I think, so I'm huge on women empowerment. I love empowering women to kind of step in their own and step in their own power. Yeah. Um, I also am, you know, I'm such a big proponent of like, I don't want to be known as a female right. business owner. I want to just kind of be on that same mm -hmm. level, that same playing field. So it's like, just don't even think of yourself as different, yeah. right? Like, I think that we can bring something to the table the same way that men can bring to the table when it comes to yeah. um, playing in this space and playing mm -hmm. in the real estate field. And it's like, don't even think of yourself as as being less than or, yeah. you know, not having any sort of history in some sort of industry. So I've always thought of it that way. And it's really helped me um, to be able to see that, you know, us as women can do it for yeah. sure. And sometimes <laughs> do it better. Right. <laughs> hey, the um, truth. <laughs> but it's, if again, I'm like so fueled by people saying yeah. that I can't do something. And me. I think that's the big thing is like dig into that, you know, yeah. where is it like, where's that fire where you're like, Oh, they told me I can't do it. Yeah. And I want to do it. And it's really cool now. Cause especially in the financial sector where I'm in. So we're technically insurance industry, very yeah, old industry. And I'll go to these conventions where I'm one of like five women yeah. out of, you know, a hundred people. And yeah. I absolutely love it. And yeah. You have to. I love it. Just, and I yeah. think that you just think of it as like, you're paving the way for other yeah. young females to, to just know that they can do it too. So and it, it doesn't take anything else more than you just having the courage to go for it. I love it. I love yeah. it. I love it. And if you had the chance to tell young Amanda, okay. Something. Yeah. What would you tell her now? Oh my gosh, that's such a good <laughs> question. Um, At I 22 just, years old, it's I like. would just tell her now, like, um, just believe in yourself more. Just, you know, not, um, you know, just go for it. I think it, I, it took too long for me to believe in myself, you know, not too long, right? We all have, we can all start somewhere, but, um, you know, if I would have started a little bit sooner, yeah. you know, we'd be a little bit further along and, you know, I would have been able to experience a lot more time with my kids when they were younger. Yeah. So the younger me, I would just, you know, tell her to believe in herself. Yeah. Believe in herself, mom. Yeah. Belief believe is very herself. important. Yeah. That's a big time Roman state too, you know, belief systems, believe yeah. in yourself and the, the confidence is. Yeah. And just have the belief to go after what you want and not what everybody else wants for you. I love it. I love yeah. it. I love it. And the last question is what does 200% mean to you? <laughs> well, 200% definitely means to me well again we're talking about taking massive action yeah. right so again, yeah. a huge tony robbins fan 200 percent just means going after everything all in 100 percent. like when i make a commitment and yeah. when i make a goal like yeah. i will go after it no matter what and yeah. you know if i fail like i learn a lesson so 200 percent <laughs> to me just means you're gonna you're gonna either win or you're gonna learn Yep. And that's what life's all about. I love it. I love yeah. it. I love it. Yeah. Well, where can we find you, Amanda, on the social media platform sure. so that so people can it's follow you? At Celebrate with Amanda on Instagram, uh, just Amanda Douglas on Facebook. You can follow us at Celebration Title Group mm -hmm. on Instagram as well. Um, and then CelebrationTitleGroup.com. As our as our website. Absolutely. So, so I mean, if you're in the any of these markets and you are a real estate agent or you're just a homeowner, you need a title, title services, this yeah. is the first to go. Um, it's Celebration Title Group. Please follow her. Give her some business. Cheers to you. Cheers to you. Absolutely. Thank you for Thank having you so me. Much. This Absolutely. was so much fun. Thank <laughs> you. And cheers to all of our listeners. We thank you. And don't forget to rate, subscribe, comment. And we'll see you next time on the 200% Live podcast.